Hi, my name is Ted O'Connell, author of USMLE Step 2 Secrets. This is part one of the gastroenterology chapter. Before we get started, we encourage you to take a look at medicalschoolvideos.com and send us any feedback at step2secrets at gmail.com. Let's get started. Define gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. What causes it? GERD means that stomach acid refluxes into the esophagus. It is caused by inappropriate intermittent relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. The incidence is increased greatly in patients with a hiatal hernia. Describe the classic symptoms of GERD. How is it treated? The main complaint is usually heartburn, often related to eating and lying supine. GERD may also cause abdominal or chest pain. The initial treatment is to elevate the head of the bed and to avoid coffee, alcohol, tobacco, spicy and fatty foods, chocolate, and medications with anticholinergic properties. If this approach fails, antacids, histamine 2 blockers, or H2 blockers, and proton pump, proton pump inhibitors may be tried. Many patients have already tried over-the-counter remedies, and many physicians begin empiric treatment at the first visit because lifestyle modifications usually fail. Surgery in the form of a Nissen fundoplication is reserved for severe or resistant cases. What are the sequelae of GERD? Sequelae of GERD include esophagitis, esophageal stricture, which may mimic esophageal cancer, esophageal ulcer, hemorrhage, Barrett esophagus, and esophageal adenocarcinoma. What is a hiatal hernia? How is it different from a paraesophageal hernia? A hiatal hernia is a sliding hernia, which means that the whole gastroesophageal junction moves above the diaphragm, pulling the stomach with it. This common and benign finding may predispose to GERD. In a paraesophageal hernia, the gastroesophageal, gastroesophageal junction stays below the diaphragm, but the stomach herniates through the diaphragm into the thorax. This type of hernia is uncommon but serious. It may become strangulated and should be repaired surgically. What are the signs of peptic ulcer disease? The classic symptoms of peptic ulcer disease are chronic intermittent epigastric pain, which is burning, gnawing, or aching. And this pain is localized and often relieved by antacids or milk. Look for epigastric tenderness. Other signs and symptoms include occult blood in the stool and nausea or vomiting. Peptic ulcer disease is more common in men. The two types of peptic ulcer disease are gastro, gastric and du duodenal ulcers. Explain the classic differences between duodenal and gastric ulcers. Duodenal ulcers account for 75% of cases of ulcers, while gastric ulcers account for the other 25%. In duodenal ulcers, acid secretion is normal to high, while in gastric ulcers, acid secretion is normal to low. The main causes of duodenal ulcers are Helicobacter pylori, and with gastric ulcers, the main cause is the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, including aspirin. The peak age of duodenal ulcers is in the 40s, and with gastric ulcers, in the 50s. Duodenal ulcers are classically associated with type O blood, while gastric ulcers are associated with type A blood. With a duodenal ulcer, eating food causes the pain to get better, but then worse two to three hours later. With gastric ulcers, the pain is not relieved or made worse. What is the diagnostic study of choice for peptic ulcer disease? The gold standard is endoscopy, which is the most sensitive test but an upper gastrointestinal barium study is cheaper and less invasive. Empiric treatment with medications may be tried in the absence of diagnostic studies if the symptoms are typical. If endoscopy is done, a biopsy of any gastric ulcer is mandatory to exclude malignancy. Duodenal ulcers do not have to be biopsied initially because malignancy is rare. What is the most feared complication of peptic ulcer disease? What should you suspect if an ulcer does not respond to treatment? The most feared complication of peptic ulcer disease is perforation. Look for peritoneal signs, history of peptic ulcer disease, and free air on an abdominal radiograph. 
treat with antibiotics such as ceftriaxone and metronidazole, and laparotomy with repair of the perforation. If ulcers are severe, atypical, or non-healing, think about stomach cancer or Zollinger-Ellison syndrome. Peptic ulcer disease is also a cause of GI bleeding, which can be severe in some cases. How is peptic ulcer disease treated initially? First, remember that diet changes are not thought to help heal ulcers, although reduced alcohol and tobacco use may speed healing. Stop all NSAID use. Start treatment with proton pump inhibitors, test for Helicobacter pylori infection, and treat with antibiotics if positive. Many, many regimens exist, but the most commonly used is triple therapy with a proton pump inhibitor, clarithromycin, and amoxicillin. List the surgical options for ulcer treatment. What complications may occur? Surgical op options generally are considered only if medical treatment has failed or if complications are present, such as perforation or bleeding. Surgical procedures for peptic ulcer disease include antrectomy, vagotomy, and Bill Billroth 1 or 2 procedures. After surgery, watch for dumping syndrome, which includes weakness, dizziness, sweating, and nausea or vomiting after eating. Patients also develop hypoglycemia two to three hours after a meal, which causes recurrence of the same symptoms, as well as afferent loop syndrome, bacterial overgrowth, and vitamin deficiencies especially vitamin B12 and or iron, causing anemia. Define achlorhydria. What causes it? Achlorhydria is an absence of hydrochloric acid secretion. It is caused most commonly by pernicious anemia, in which antiparietal cell antibodies destroy acid-secreting parietal cells and thus cause achlorhydria and vitamin B12 deficiency. It is often associated with other endocrine autoimmune disorders, such as hypothyroidism, vitiligo, diabetes, and hypoadrenalism. Achlorhydria also may be caused by surgical gastric resection. What are the classic differences between upper and lower GI bleeds? With upper GI bleeds, the location typically is proximal, to, is proximal to the ligament of trites, but with a lower GI bleed, it is distal to the ligament of trites. Common causes of upper GI bleed include gastritis, ulcers, varices, and esophagitis. Common causes of lower GI bleed include vascular ectasia, diverticulosis, colon cancer, colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, and hemorrhoids. With an upper GI bleed, stool is tarry and black, so-called melana. With a lower GI bleed, bright red blood is seen in the stool, and this is called hematochesia. An NG tube aspirate in an upper GI bleed is positive for blood, but with a lower GI bleed, it is negative for blood. How is a GI bleed treated? The first step is to make sure that the patient is stable. Check the ABCs and provide intravenous fluids and blood if needed before you try to reach a diagnosis. Next, place a nasogastric tube and test the aspirate for blood to help determine whether the patient has an upper or lower GI bleed. Endoscopy is usually the first test performed, upper or lower, depending on symptoms and the results of the nasogastric tube aspirate. Endoscopically treatable lesions include ulcers, polyps, vac vascular ectasias, and varices. What radiologic imaging studies can be done to localize a GI bleed? Does surgery have a role? Nuclear medicine scans can detect slow or intermittent bleeds if a source cannot be found with endoscopy. Angiography can detect more rapid bleeds and embolization of bleeding vessels can be done during the procedure. Surgery is reserved for severe or resistant bleeds and typically involves resection of the affected bowel, usually the colon. Define diverticulosis. What are its complications? Diverticulosis is characterized by sac-like mucosal projections through the muscular layer of the colon and or rectum. 
It is extremely common and the incidence increases with age. It is thought to be caused in part by a low fiber, high fat diet. Complications include GI bleeding, a common cause of painless lower GI bleeds, and diverticulitis, which is inflammation of a diverticulum, which can lead to abscess, fistula formation, sepsis, or large bowel obstruction. How do you diagnose and treat diverticulitis? What test should a patient have after a treated episode of diverticulitis? Signs and symptoms of diverticulitis include left lower quadrant pain or tenderness, fever, diarrhea or constipation, and increased white blood cell count. The pathophysiology is thought to be similar to appendicitis. Stool or other debris impacts within the diverticulum and causes obstruction, leading to bacterial overgrowth and inflammation. The diagnosis can be confirmed with a CT scan, if needed, which can also help rule out complications such as perforation or abscess. In the absence of complications, the treatment is antibiotics that cover bowel flora, for example, a fluoroquinolone plus metronidazole, as well as bowel rest. Surgery is needed for perforation or abscess. After a treated episode of diverticulitis, all patients need colon cancer screening with colonoscopy because colon carcinoma with perforation can mimic diverticulitis clinically and on CT scan. These studies should be avoided during active diverticulitis, however, because of an increased risk of perforation. That's the end of part one of the GI chapter in USMLE Step 2 Secrets. Please join us for our other videos.